morning, YouTube. It is Sunday morning, and we are gonna combine some soybeans. So we did a little last night. Still a little yet wet yet. Um, they were testing about 17 and a half percent moisture. We want the beans really to be below 15, um, but optimal for us would be 13 percent. So these are a little wetter than I'd like them to be but we haven't been able to combine for 10 days we lost a good part of the stretch uh, about a week ago um, we had some breakdowns with the combine we had an issue with the feeder house not lifting up and we had a problem with the pulley on uh, the motor so a few a few things that set us back luckily on the apple side of things we've been real uh having real good weather there with the group of guys and stuff we're picking out in good shape and we are uh right on ahead of we're not ahead of schedule but we're right perfect so we're actually uh not working saturdays until some of these later varieties ripen up the fuji evercrest and then we'll be uh into some long weeks again on the apple side of things we've been able to get uh most of the wheat planted Probably about 60% done with that. With the wheat, we're putting it in after early soybeans. Uh, about 25% of the ground for a rotation. We don't do corn right now, so we use wheat as our rotation as well as um, some Sudan grasses and other things like that. So let's check the oil. We're good. So. The oil has to be in between those marks. Just got it. This year we got a new to us head. This is a 2020. Uh, this is the model. It's actually like a 2009 or something. 20 foot head, which was the same as the old one. Just this one's in a lot better shape. Uh, all the tines are straight and good. The other ones were all bent up. Um, it's got a stainless pan in the bottom there and uh, it's got the new style gearbox it doesn't have the wobble box it's got the planetary drive or whatever so this took a bit to get the adapter for the pto adapter plate because this feeder house is a little bit smaller than this head and the hydraulics we had to do up and we still don't have the auto header height figured out let's get fired up side of the combine so I'm gonna run combine for a little bit this morning uh, that way we don't have to have anyone else come into work on a Sunday and then uh, Matt's actually gonna switch out with me um, this afternoon and I'll run truck so we can keep uh, keep going but right now all the trucks are empty combines empty so I'm gonna I can work a little bit by myself just fill everything up so that way when we get a second person here, uh, we got a nice rhythm going. So we'll catch up with you once we get home.
bit of weeds. But this field had two different varieties in it. It had a Pioneer 1.9 group soybean, and then it also had a Asgro 1.9 group soybean. It was every 60 feet, and then there was a variety change. So um, the Asgro's were drier earlier on, so we ended up coming through and you can see we stripped the field so we stripped the field combining just the as growth so now we're coming back through and we're combining the pioneers uh, they're still a little wet the stems are still green the moisture is running pretty wet right now um, I said earlier looks like we're running 18 or so right now Hopefully with a little bit of heat and some air on these beans, we'll get them to be able to dry down. But uh, I want to get this field done because there's only about eight acres left here. And we're going to be moving to another section of the farm. So I don't want to just leave these eight acres and have to come back for them. So we're grinding them out. And uh, hopefully these will blend in with the other ones pretty good. So as we're combining, the beans get fed into the head. This reel helps rake the beans in so they don't fall forward. So if I pick that reel right up out of the way, you can see how they start falling up right away when I do that. You can see you couldn't see the sickle bar anymore. So there's a sickle bar down which is cutting the beans. And I'm always looking behind the head to make sure that we're not losing any beans. Uh, they show up real good, they show up white, and that I'm not cutting too high. Soybeans like to sit right on the ground, so the lowest you can get to the ground, the better. This is called a flex head because this side will be able to flex different from that side, so that way it can follow the contour of the ground. So then it goes in here, feeder house, and then it comes underneath us, which is a rotor. Case IH have rotor machines, so uh, basically that's just spinning. It's got some big uh, bars on it, and basically that's threshing the grain. It's getting it out of the soybean pod. So when the grain's drier, it's more brittle. The plant's drier, so it chops up really good. It separates real well. So then there's a fan, and the fan's blowing air on that grain that just got all smashed up. Now the soybeans are heavier than the pieces of trash or leaves or uh, pods. So what that fan does is it blows and separates the grain because the amount of airflow you have, it's not enough to blow the soybeans. They fall down, but the trash blows up. And what that does is it blows up and out the back. So that doesn't get rid of all the trash. Then what happens is it goes over the sieves, which are basically um, the last step of the cleaning process. And what they're doing is they're shaking and they have little holes in it and it's shaking out the soybeans. The soybeans fall through those screens and then they get collected in the auger and they come out behind us in the grain tank, which you saw some of that video there. Um, so then here, so that's kind of how the combine works. So now this is a hydrostatic machine. So the farther I push this forward, the faster we go. I also have the raise and lower on there. So I'm raising up on the end and I'm gonna speed up to go faster. So this is a pretty easy machine to drive. Like I said, it's hydrostatic. It's like your lawnmower. Uh, faster you push the pedal, faster you go. So we're just coming in here to another pass. Usually, like, usually we don't have these strips in the field like this. So I'm gonna slow down. I like to combine a little bit slower than maybe most other uh, farmers, but we like to go a little bit slower, run our concaves, we call them, which is the amount of trash it can go through the combine a little tighter and I feel we get more 
uh, more grain out of it and we're not losing as much. So we're running 2.7 miles an hour right now. Right here is the throttle, some of the gauges, fuel, and what, and that. So this is a 1990 combine. And what we did is we took uh, probably in 2019 is when we did it. So we have 2019 age technology in this combine. So what that means is, is this screen right here. So basically wherever it's green, that's higher yield. So what this is doing is it's tracking using GPS. We have a globe on the top of the combine. It's pinpointing exactly in the field where the moisture was and where the yield was. So there's different soil types in the field. There's there's low spots where the wind may not dry the beans out as much, therefore having higher moisture. So with that, instead of just at the end of the field adding up all the truckloads and the tickets for, okay, that field averaged 50 bushels per acre, we know exactly, okay, where in the field was below that average and above that average. So if you have a low pocket where they don't do so well, 30 bushels an acre or so, it will map on here where those areas are. If you got a really good zone, it will show you that good zone. So by doing that, we can take that yield data paired with our soil samples and we can try to replicate where it is high yield. How do we do that again and how do we do it over more acres in that field? So it's able to manage, have us manage smaller acres of uh, fields you call them, zones, instead of treating it all as one field, there's probably 20 different zones in a field. So as I'm going across here, let me zoom out here, and you can see right there, see how there was a yellow it's kind of yellow on that headlands there, right? And then it's green. Up in here on that side hill, there's a few spots of bad section. So right in there, the yield was lower. So that could have been because of a moisture thing, fertilizer, or anything like that. So we can go in here and we can do the moisture. So the browner it is, the drier it is. So actually where it's brown, that was from last week when the soybeans were much drier. The blue is where we're going today, which is a little bit higher moisture. So I'll zoom right in here and you can see there we are. We're mapping blue, uh, blue uh, moisture. So there's sensors in our grain elevators that are sensing the amount of yield in the field. They're sensing the amount of moisture in the field and then they're mapping it here. From there, we can take a USB stick and upload it onto the computer, which then we can make soil prescriptions for the field. And we have that history. We can see, okay, in in that zone that you saw was yellow, a little bit lower yield. Was that low last year or was that high last year? Um, or is that always a consistent low area in the field? Which may mean you need to put in some drain tile, you need to uh, do a soil sample there to see if your pH is right. Or it could just be not uh, highly productive soil. Sometimes the soil only can do so much. So what we're seeing right now is our instant yield right now is 81 bushels or 87 per acre. Our moisture is 16%, so it's a little wet. You can see the average for this field right now is running at 68, and the moisture is 13.9. So I'm very happy with that average yield.
video will be a video on apples. Uh, I'm gonna just try to keep mixing it up. I got a few grain videos I want to throw in there, but uh, maybe some of the grain stuff interests people more than the apple stuff. But that's one nice thing I'm hoping to do with this channel. We can mix it up and uh, hopefully something new every day that maybe you're not exposed to or not familiar with. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, before it shuts down, remember to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed or uh, if you're not getting the notifications, you can just press that little bell next to the subscribe button. So thank you. Have a good day.